to Vedic Life Coaching. Thanks so much for joining me. Now in today's video we're going to do something a little bit different, a little bit lighthearted and a little bit fun. And this video is going to form part of the creative, pretty sure I've called it creative astrology playlist on the channel. Now if you're a regular viewer you would have noticed that last year I uploaded a song series where I dedicated a song to each sign. It was such a fun series to do and I was just looking back over it and I was looking at some of the notes and a lot of people had recalled and recounted, wow this is really creative, this is really new, I haven't seen anything like this before and I definitely have more content to put in the creative astrology playlist. There's definitely a lot more coming there. Um, this year I've got I've got some things planned, some new things planned for it. I know what I want to do but I don't want to reveal too much either because um, I tend to like to make things and then just put them live and see how they turn out. But thankfully recently as I was watching you know, I tend to watch some of the famous Vedic astrologers online. Uh, I love watching, for example, Sam Jeppe, KRS, Joni Petrie is another favorite. Um, and I watch, you know, the, the tropical Vedic guys. I even watch the Western astrology people, people like Kelly Rosano, Barbara Goldsmith. There's so many. I mean, there are heaps. So I've just rattled off a few names. But Recently, while I was watching a Joni video, she mentioned this brilliant little phrase. She said, home is where the heart is. And she said, yep, yeah, and I'm talking about the fourth house. And I thought, wow. And I thought, absolutely. I thought that just couldn't be a more perfect description of the fourth house, cancer. I just thought that was so beautiful. And I thought there must be heaps of other common phrases and proverbs and sayings that we have in the English language that match up astrologically. So that's what today's video is all about. I just thought, you know, a little fun, lighthearted look at language and see, okay, what other phrases are quite astrological in nature or they work astrologically or there's something like that. Now I tried to brainstorm a few. I've got a few here. I've, I've got a couple of things here, but what I thought was that this could be like a living video that we all contribute to, right? So over the coming days, weeks, or even months, if you come up with a phrase or if you hear a phrase in the English language or you find something, you stumble upon some linguistic thing that really matches some astrological principle or something in astrology or that expresses some astrological thing really beautifully, Come back to this video if you can find it. It'll be under the Creative Astrology playlist. So come back and write a comment and write, hey, I found this phrase and I think it matches up with XYZ. Um, and I'm going to get the ball rolling by telling you some of mine. I have, I have seen a few, come up with a few. I, I kind of Google searched classic proverbs and English phrases and things like that. And I've got a a couple of good ones. I think they're pretty good here. Um, so I'm going to go through mine. But as well, me too, if in the coming months or however long, you know, I come up with another phrase or I hear someone talking and they mention something like home is where the heart is and I think, oh, that's the fourth house. Like I will come back as well to this video and I'll make my notes here as well. I also wanted to say that if you speak another language, which I know many of my viewers are very multilingual, multi-talented, brilliant people. You guys are very brilliant. And I know this because I do readings for you and I'm always blown away by the quality of the people that come for a reading. You guys are special, special people. I, I'm always... You know, and then I get to hear what you do for a living and I'm blown away by that and, and really incredible people. Um, just the other day, for example, I did a reading for an embryologist and I'm like, wow, how amazing. So uh, a lot of feminine energy was present, I can tell you, in that reading. But um, what I wanted to say is that if you speak another language, so of course, if there's some phrase in Hindi, and actually I'm going to speak to my mum tomorrow, and I must make a note of this um, just so that I remember to ask her. Hang on, I'll just jot down mum Hindi phrases because she'll have 
heaps, I reckon. Um, but I mean, the thing is, she doesn't know the language of astrology, but she knows all the cool phrases. So maybe I'll be able to see what what we can brainstorm together tomorrow. But so, for example, in Hindi, there might be something and you think, oh, well, we always say this in Hindi. And of course, that's actually an astrological thing. So jot it down in the comments below. That would be really cool. I also definitely know I've got a couple of French speakers on here. So um, and I think there was a viewer in South Africa. I know they have really cool colloquial phrases. So, you know, if this could be as international as possible, that would be wonderful as well. But without further ado, how about I get into some of the ones that I thought up? I, I've got, I reckon I've got two or three here that are pretty good. Uh, but, you know, so home is where the heart is. So let's have a look in, in the chart, if we were looking at the chart. Um, and I'll draw one up because I've got a couple here that work quite nicely. Uh, and... I just think this is so cool because what I was doing with the song series when I dedicated my song to you was I was showing how the patterns, because the stars and the movement of the planets, they're just, it's a perpetual dance. It's a cosmic dance. It's always going on. And these movements, these patterns, you know, Sting, there's a line, a few lines in one of his songs where he says, let me see if I can remember it correctly. He says, inside every turning leaf is the pattern of an older tree the shape of our future, the shape of our history. How beautiful is that? You know, it's that perpetual pattern that I think it's like the Fibonacci sequence and the golden ratio and all these kind of things, these beautiful, and you see it in fruits and vegetables and you see it everywhere. And we can see it in language, which is just so incredible, you know. So we're going to have a look at this. So the fourth house, uh, which is right here. So this was the one that Joni mentioned Home is where the heart is when she was talking about the fourth house. Now, the one that I've got, whoops, doesn't matter. You can tell that this is, well, it's not live, but, you know, I tend to leave my mistakes in. I think that's a good thing. Anyway, uh, <laughs> because it's important, you know, we're not, we're not perfect. And uh, that's, that's how that is. That's why I leave the mistakes in deliberately. Okay, so here's one, second house. What happens here in the second house? right? Money and speech. It's a beautiful phrase in our language, money talks, right? Isn't that fantastic? I just think that's a cool one. So that came to me because the other one that I quite liked is, and I don't have many, I have said that. I tried, I wanted to have like a list of 20, but honestly, I've just got a handful here. So I'm going to rub out that little second house thing because now, whoops, I want to talk about... I want to talk about the third house. Do you know what? Do you know what I'm going to do instead of because this is not really working out? I haven't rehearsed this either. I've had a busy day. I've just been working. I'm going to put dollar signs in here. How about that? I think that'll work. Okay. So we had money talks, second house. That was pretty neat. Uh, okay. Oh, and I might as well write air, air and air. I hope this is neat enough to read. I actually don't know if it is, but these are dollar signs and that says air, air and air. What do we have here? We've got the third house, we've got the seventh house, and we've got the eleventh house. And what's the phrase? The phrase is, your network is your net worth. How many times have you heard that? I've heard that so many times. I, To me, this one is on par with Home is where the heart is. So your network is your net worth. Because what's your business? Your business is here in the seventh house. And it's contracts and it's all that kind of stuff. And it's money, right? Um, it's assets, but it's business. It's and contracts and marriage as well. Because a marriage is a merger. A marriage is a merger of like two individual entities that each have assets of some kind. So, and there, there has always been, I think, in um, society, there's always been a kind of business type connotation with marriage in the old days. Not anymore. I think things are changing a lot. But um, back in the old days, it, it certainly was the case. But let's stick to business. Your network is your net worth. So your network, right? What, where's your network? Okay, 11th house, network. 
professional contacts. And siblings, older siblings, right? So siblings are here too, your peers, people that help you. That's, they're part of your network. And then we've got your network here as well. This is a different type of networking. Again, it, but this is a business house. And I do tend to think sales and media, um, people who are strong in those areas have a good third house. So th this is also siblings as well, younger siblings and peers, very much peers. It's also hobbies. It's also things you do for fun. And I tend to think that the first part of uh, the Zodiac 1 to 6 is a more private sort of individual type of um, thing going on here whereas when we get into collective and, and bigger group energies we're looking you know 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 and 12 of course is just everything uh, but you know I guess is kind of the last point of collective in this sort of sense in the 11th house here but um but I like this one your network is your net worth and of course feel free to comment below if you agree if you disagree but these are air houses these are so we've got Gemini Libra uh, Aquarius air and your network is your net worth and actually this leads into the next one which is the information economy uh, I jotted this one down so this this is eh, you know I think this one's okay but um I tend to think your network is your net worth and home is where the heart is. These are really good examples. Information economy. It's a little bit like money talks, but information economy, that's true. It, it is this concept of money not being a physical thing. Uh, and we've got money here in these houses, don't we? But it's air. So the information economy, and even I think even Bitcoin and things like that, we can class as air can't we? It's kind of like, you know, these, these are not physical things. Um, this, conf th this concept of, you know, um, information economy is, is quite interesting as well. I remember when I was a student studying at university, I did a Bachelor of Information Technology and it, it was always, we were always taught data, information, knowledge. And, you know, I think going into the future now, because we're going to have artificial intelligence, um, you know, knowledge is, is, is going to be, yes, data, information, knowledge, and we're going to have wisdom and we're going to have, you know, uh, more layers to come. So, and I think what's going to become important is building our intuition, waking up our um, sixth sense and other senses beyond that, you know. I think that's going to be the exciting thing in the future. Okay, let's have a look. Let's keep going here. So I've got a couple more. Uh, so I covered your network is your net worth. Hang on, I am going to pick this up because, because it's bothering me. <laughs> How about I rub this out and start again? So what have we got now? I think I've got another couple. I've even got one that's just a symbol, which is quite cool. So, okay, how about this? Well, for me, oh, I see this thing doesn't like to not have a lid on it. I have another one, which is good. What am I doing for time? I might be taking up too much of your time. Oh my goodness, look at that. You see, I have so much fun here. And then and then the time runs away. All right, look, I'm, I'm not going to mess around anymore. I'm not going to be throwing my pen lids on the floor. No, no, I'm going to be organized. And we're going to get through this efficiently. Still waters run deep. Okay, what do I think of when I think of that? I think of the eighth house still waters run deep uh, this is a fantastic phrase to describe the eighth house I've always thought this actually um, to me this has always been the still waters run deep and run so deep that things get hidden there there are secrets there are things that you will never find out <laughs> no matter how hard you try you put Virgo in here anybody's got Virgo in the eighth house Wow, they're going to be up for some uh, frustration. So, you know, anyway, in their relationships, they might be up for some frustration because they'll, they'll want to analyze. You see that this is why I'm saying this, because Virgo wants to analyze, wants to get to the bottom of things, wants very much to get to the bottom of things. And, uh, you know, with their analytical minds, very difficult to do that here. It's not easy. The other one that I had 
In the kingdom of the blind, the one-eyed man is king. Now that's a strange phrase, if ever there was one. And if you've ever watched David Icke, he's got a few things to say about this. But I have an astrological thing to say about it. Uh, what is the symbol for the sun? It is, is that, basically. It's a circle with a dot in the middle. And that's, in the kingdom of the blind, the one-eyed man is king. Who is the one-eyed man? Who is king? It's the sun. You see, because the sun represents a king. The moon is the queen. The Mars is, Mars is the commander. Uh, we've got Mercury, the prince. We've got... Now I'm pretty sure it's, is it Rahu Ketu both that are the army? We are going to go into this in the creative astrology playlist. I've, I've got a whole thing about this. So we're definitely going to, you know, Jupiter, Venus, the counselors. So we will be going into that in, in more depth here. Uh, the other thing that I wanted to take you through, and this was just a sweet little thing that I thought was also quite astrological in nature. Some of it's astrological. I won't need to jot anything down and be messy. Um, some of it's astrological. I mean, it is largely astrological, but let's go through it. It's, you know, when they have a saying for each day. So let's go through each one and I'll, I'll explain what I mean. So Monday's child is fair of face. The moon, fair face. It's, it has a big white face. So that, that one works. This one I wasn't so thrilled with. Tuesday's child is full of grace. Tuesday is Mars. Maybe you can be a graceful warrior. Sure, why not? I don't see why not. Maybe you're a martial artist. How about that? That works if you're a martial artist. A Mars kind of... Mars, martial. Yes, yeah, that works. Uh, you know, Kung Fu people and Karate people, they're so graceful, aren't they? Anyway, Wednesday's child is full of woe. I can't work out a link there. Mercury. Maybe he's full of woe because he's going retrograde four times a year. I don't know. But this works. Thursday's child has far to go. Jupiter. Far. Big journey. Ninth house. Let's say ninth house. You know, big long distance travel. Friday's child is loving and giving. Love. Friday. Venus. Perfect. Uh, Saturday's child works hard for its living. Saturn. Right? It says it. Does what it says on the tin. And a child that's born on the Sabbath day is fair and wise and good and gay. So that's just a sweet, soulful thing there because, of course, the sun represents the soul um, and, you know, our inner expression and all those kind of things. So uh, then I, I had a finishing note here, which was it takes all sorts to make a world. And I guess you could think of the 12th house there where just about, you know, um, the, the boundaries have truly come down at that point. Um, so, yeah. But I would love to hear which ones you guys come up with because I bet you'll come up with some good ones. And if not, don't worry, but um, keep this video in mind and come back to it and make a comment if there's something that you discover or something pops into your mind or somebody's talking and you think, ah, that's astrological in nature. I'd love to hear it. So... Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.